M E L S. That's right, folks. B for comedy, A for Abbott, M for Maxwell, E for Ennis, L for Lou Costello. Yes, they spell camel, the cigarette of costlier, properly aged tobaccos that brings you the Camel Show, starring Bud Abbott and Lou Costello. <laughs> Where is Costello's house? Well, there's 204. There's 205. 205 and 7 eighths. 205 and 9 sixteenths. Oh, oh, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Oh, Mr. Abbott, I never thought you'd get here in time. Uh, uh, how is Costello? Oh, I'm so worried, Mr. Abbott. I've never seen him this way. I'm afraid uh, he... Don't say it. Don't say it, my pal Costello. <laughs> oh, Mrs. Adams... Yes? Uh, if anything should happen to Costello, promise me one thing. What? Promise me you won't rent his room until you hear from me, please. I promise. Won't you come in? You'll have to excuse the appearance of the place. I haven't had time to pick up any of this junk on the floor. Try not to step on my husband. It's his birthday. <laughs> yes, I, I'll be careful. Well, I'm so sentimental, Mr. Rabbit. Do you think I ought to stick a candle in his mouth? I... <laughs> Yes, by all means. Look, where is Costello's room? Right over there. Uh, thank you. Come in. Mother! Uh, <laughs> Mother? Yeah. Costello, don't you know me? I'm Abbott. Oh, those green slacks fool me. Uh, oh, <laughs> Abbott. Am I glad to see you? What in the world is the matter with you? I'm afraid there's a screw loose in my mind. Oh, my goodness, you had me worried. <laughs> I thought it was something serious. It is serious. <laughs> Very serious. My mind is just like a brain to me. <laughs> Abbott, you gotta help me. Well, what is the matter with you? Remember that dream I had where the fellow said every time I told a lie or did something bad, he'd blow a horn? Well, what about it? Do you know where I can reach Petrillo? Oh, oh God, 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 you just imagine it. No, I don't. All day long, night and day, he follows me around, blowing that horn. Now I know how Betty Grable must feel. Oh, Costello. <laughs> yeah. You're acting like a child. You, you probably haven't had enough sleep. Did you drink anything last night? You know I don't drink. Were you out late with a girl? You know I never have anything to do with girls. <laughs> did, did someone say Costello? There it goes again. Abbott, it's the guy with the horn. Oh, I didn't hear anything. Abbott? Yes. Is there anyone in back of me? All there is in back of you is more you. <laughs> Abbott, there's something wrong with me. I knew it the moment I walked through that door. How did you know? The door was closed. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Costello, four o'clock, time for your medicine. Uh, wait a minute, Costello, that's a dog biscuit. They work. I haven't howled in two days. <laughs> <laughs> Will you stop this foolishness? You need a change of scenery. Uh, we'll drive to the beach and give the girls the once-over. What do you say? Oh, that stuff bores me. <laughs> Abbott. What now? I heard that music. I didn't hear a thing. I heard the music. Oh, I wish my mother was here. Why? She danced with me. <laughs> Costello, you're going to drive yourself nuts. Don't say that. Life couldn't be that cruel to me. I'm a nice guy. Look at me. I'm in my prime. Everything to live for. A perfect specimen. <laughs> Yes, I am. I'm a perfect specimen. 260 pounds of bulging muscles. <laughs> Flabby muscles? Teensy weensy muscles? Blubber? Blubber. <laughs> hey, who are you talking to? The guy with the horn. He just gave me another argument. Look, Costello, there's nothing wrong with you. You're just as normal as you ever were. That's right. Kick a man when he's down. <laughs> oh, how could this happen to me? I'm good to my mother. I got money in the bank. Uh, I love animals. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. You say you've got money in the bank? About $400. <laughs> 28 bucks. Uh, <laughs> 28 bucks, eh? Oh, boy, if I could only get my hands on that. What'd you say? Uh, 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 I said uh, that's a lot, lot to have on your hands. Uh, uh, let me look at you. 
Ha-ha! I'm dying. He's cleaning his teeth. <laughs> Castelli, you're not dying. What's happening to you is far worse. I know it. I knew it last night when the landlady brought up that pot roast. <laughs> why, pot roast is very good for you. That's why I think I'm going batty. Why? After I ate the pot, I had no appetite for the roast. <laughs> what am I going to do, Abbott? Well, Castello, anytime something like this happens to a man, someone has to administer his, his estate. Now, you don't want to leave all of that $28 to the government, do you? Oh, no. No. Some foreign country might hear about it and try to make a loan. Sure. <laughs> Besides, I always figured I'd leave it to my Aunt Marie. Your Aunt Marie? Yeah. She was so good. She was like a mother to me. A father, mm. a sister, a brother, an uncle, a grandmother. And we all lived together in one little room. <laughs> now, now, Costello, we have to put the money where it'll do the most good. I'd like to leave something to my girl, Gladys. Oh, why worry about her? She's got a good job with the carnival. Yes, I know. But one of these nights, someone's going to throw that baseball straight and knock her head right off. <laughs> now, let me see. 28 bucks. Um, that's not enough to start a college, is it? No. Uh, how about a small college? No. Junior college? Uh, no, Costello. <laughs> you're, 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 you're thinking all wrong. Who is your best friend? You. Now you're thinking. Uh, hey, if you'll forgive me, I'd like to ask a silly question. Uh, how, how do I know you won't spend the money? Uh, you're forgiven. Thank you. Okay, now, we want to, now, don't forget, we want to make this all legal and binding. We'll get a lawyer and put everything in writing. Is that okay? Well, if you want a good lawyer, call my uncle. Where can I get him? Well, call Fiedelhofer Binks, Fernswagger Binks, Immelflocker Binks, and Spandolian Binks. Uh, why so many Binks? It's the same guy. He'd just like to keep an eye on the others. <laughs> Look, which one is your uncle? Jones. Jones? <laughs> yeah, of Jones, Fairness Graham, Retina, DeWitt, and Mulroney. Uh, uh, <laughs> then why, why did you tell me to call Fiedelhofer Binks, Bernschweiger Binks, Immelflocker Binks, and Spandolian Binks if your uncle is with Jones, Fanescram, Rittina, DeWitt, Mulroney? <laughs> why did you tell me that? Because Jones, Fanescram, Rittina, DeWitt, and Mulroney's phone is out of order, and Fiedelhofer Binks, Bernschweiger Binks, Immelflocker Binks, and Spandolian Binks will take the message. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> Look, will you please repeat that? Are you kidding? I'm lucky I got it out there. Wait a minute. <laughs> Come on, let me hear what you had to say. I can't. The line is busy. The now. line is busy. Yeah. Look, Costello, I don't think we should engage anyone you know. Uh, let's be impartial about this. Let's get my lawyer. Uh-oh, that's good. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Well, well, what's the matter? What do you mean impartial? If you can get your lawyer, why can't I get my lawyer? Well, now, you see, my lawyer doesn't know your lawyer. That makes it impartial. Oh, yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> Come in. Oh, hello, Mr. Ennis. Hiya, fellas. Skinny. Brace yourself. Costello has blown his top. Yeah? Yeah. What's new? Oh, the... <laughs> Hey, wait a minute. No, 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 Costello. Don't excite yourself, uh, Skinny. Yeah. The boy is emotionally upset, and I understand that uh, musical uh, therapy is prescribed under such conditions. Is that true? Well, old therapy in will be glad to oblige. That's well. All right, Costello, compose yourself. Skinny is going to play some pretty music for you. Now, sit back. Come on. Up. Okay. Sit back, sir. Now, now relax. Now, I'll turn the lights down low. Okay. Now, <laughs> close your eyes. I got to That's wonderful. Now, put your head right on my shoulder. <laughs> Are you comfy? Uh-huh. Uh-huh? Uh-huh. Oh, that's wonderful. Anything else I can do for you? Uh-huh. What? Kiss me goodnight. Yeah, when you go lay down on all that sleep. <laughs> I don't know why I love you like I do I don't know why I just do I don't know why You thrill me like you do I don't know why You just do You never seem to want my romance The only time you hold me It's when we dance too. I don't know why I love you like I do. I don't know why I just do. I don't 
never seem to want not romancing. The only time you hold me is when we're dancing. I don't know why I love you like I do. I don't know why I just do. According to a recent nationwide survey, more doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette. Surgeons, research doctors, throat specialists, general practitioners, men in every branch of medicine were included in the survey. Doctors in every single state of the union were questioned. Three leading independent research organizations asked 113,597 doctors this question. What cigarette do you smoke, doctor? The brand named most was Camel. That's easy to understand if you smoke Camel yourself. After all, a doctor can appreciate the rich, full flavor and cool mildness of Camels as much as you can. If you are not a Camel smoker now, try Camels on your tea zone. That's tea for taste and tea for throat. See if the rich, full flavor and cool mildness of Camels' superb blend of costlier tobaccos don't suit your tea zone to a tea. Get up, Costello, please. Oh, I can't get him up. Mm. Uh, come in, Counselor. Sorry I'm late, Abbott. I was detained at court. How did you make out? I was acquitted. Good. <laughs> Mother got 20 years. Are you having a party? No. Oh, what makes you think that? What's that beer barrel on the bed? <laughs> that's no beer barrel. That's Costello. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Well, that's the chump you're taking for the 28 bucks, huh? Uh, hey, what's the deal? Hallucinations. Oh. Uh, can't you break his leg? I'm terrific at assault and battery. No, 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 no. no. We haven't got time for that. Uh, hey, Costello, wake up. Wake up! Oh, oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, all right. <coughs> okay. Mm. <sighs> Goodbye, Gladys. I... <laughs> You forget Gladys. Costello, I want you to meet uh, Counselor O'Toole. Oh, glad to know you, Counselor. Know anybody over at Tito Hoffer, Francis Grand, Bing, Stratton, the Pennsylvania, and Blackman? Costello, will you please, enough of that. Proceed, Counselor. <clears throat> Costello, multiply 3,485,112 by 6,791,844. And, um... Sorry, time's up. You're hopeless. <laughs> I got hopeless fast. <laughs> Now, uh, in this $28 estate, are there any debts outstanding? Well, I owe the drugstore 30 cents for a quart of perfume I bought for my girl. Wait, wait a minute. A quart of perfume? That's pretty extravagant. Most fellows give their girl a dram. Well, I guess I'm one of those fellows who just don't give a dram. <laughs> hey, here's her picture. Here's her picture. Name is Gladys. Isn't she beautiful? Yes, she is. She's got pretty eyes, hasn't she? Yeah, her eyes are very pretty. Which do you like better, the brown one or the blue one? <laughs> I can't decide. The blue one fascinates me. But then again, the brown one goes nicely with the truck she's driving. <laughs> Can you speak to the case, Costello? Uh, are there any other outstanding debts against the estate? Yes, sir. I still owe Abbott ten cents for the tickets he got me to see up in Central Park. Ten cents? Where did you sit? Up in Central Park. <laughs> now, are there any other provisions you wish to make? Well, yes, sir. If... If I am taken away, someone will have to look after my little friend. For instance, for breakfast, Rover must get a bone. Well, okay. A, little, a bone for Rover. Go ahead. Yes. And Tabby... Just a little warm milk. Well, okay. Warm milk for Tabby. And for Flossie, just orange juice and toast. Orange juice and toast? Yeah, Flossie's my sister. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll treat her just as if she's human. And she'll appreciate it very much, too. <laughs> now, uh, please sign your name here, Costello. Okay, I'll sign my name down here. I've got to sign Costello. C-O-S. Uh, let me see. Gee, I know it as well as I know my own name. Um, C-O-S... 
What comes next? Look, what do you have with your crumpets? A bib. I get jelly all over me. <laughs> Will you please stop stalling and sign that paper? Well, let me read it first. Take, take your time. Go ahead. Uh, come here, Robert. Uh, what's the matter? Got everything set, huh? Yeah, I got Harry, the hypnotist from the carnival. I'm giving him a third. Uh -huh. He's going to set up a whole work. Uh, we'll call him the professor. Costello will never know the difference. We'll take him over. Uh, we'll take him over there to be examined. You know, okay. Right in front of him. Well, Costello, have you signed it? No. And I ain't gonna until I get the candy. What candy? It says right here, Tasty Mints. Tasty Mints? Where? Mm -hmm. Right oh, there. Oh, that's last will and testament. <laughs> okay, I'll sign it. Now all we have to do is see the professor. Who is it? Oh, Marilyn Maxwell. Gee, fellas, I'm bashful about a girl coming into my room. Would you fellas mind leaving? <laughs> now, she's just the person we want to see. Uh, come in. Hello, boys. Oh, hello, Lewis. <laughs> Lewis. Oh, she called me Lewis again. I haven't been so thrilled since I took my first bubble bath. <laughs> Lewis, what are you doing in bed? Miss Maxwell, do I look all right to you? No, but then you never did. <laughs> you see, fellas, you must be framing me. Hey, Miss Maxwell, Mr. Costello is having hallucination. Oh, Lewis, I'm heartbroken. Would it make you feel better if I sang a song for you? Would you, Miss Maxwell? Uh-huh. And just because you are so upset... I want to do everything I can to make things pleasant for you. I want you to hold my hand. Sure. Yes. Now put your arm around my waist. Oh. And snuggle real close to me. Mm-hmm. Yes, I want to do everything I can for you just because you are in this condition. Oh, brother, the years I wasted in my right mind. <laughs> From Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of Three Wise Fools, comes that lovely singing star Marilyn Maxwell, accompanied by Camel's own Skinny Ennis and the orchestra. The song, It's a Pity to Say Goodnight. It's a pity to say goodnight, because I never saw stars so bright. But if you gotta go home, you gotta go home, give me a good night kiss. It's a pity to say farewell, because the man on the moon won't tell. But if you gotta go home, you gotta go home, give me a good night kiss. How's about tomorrow night, just you and me? I'll be waiting for you, darling, underneath the apple tree. It's a pity to say goodnight Because I want you to hold me tight But if you gotta go home, you gotta go home Give me a good night kiss Every time we get to my door I get a kiss, just one no more Can't you see what I'm talking of? Kiss and run is nowhere, my love. It's a pity to say goodnight. Cause I want you to hold me tight. But if you gotta get lost, you have to go home. Be sure you're heading for home, baby, don't roam. And if we really must part, we really must part. Give me a good kiss, good night. A five-year-old child today has the life expectancy almost 10 years longer than was her mother's and a good 18 to 20 years longer than that of her grandmother. You can thank your doctor and thousands like him for it's the amazing strides of medical science that have added years to life expectancy. The makers of camels are understandably proud of the standing of camels with the medical profession. Three leading independent research organizations recently made a survey of doctors' cigarette preferences. They question doctors in every branch of medicine, doctors in every state of the union. What cigarette do you smoke, doctor? They put that question to 113,597 doctors. The brand named most 
was camel. Yes? According to a recent nationwide survey, more doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette. Hello? This is the office of Professor Wilkins. Hypnotist, geologist, archaeologist, and Egyptologist. Office hours 12 to 3, which is exactly the score by which St. Louis beat Boston. <laughs> You're welcome. Goodbye. Abbott, I don't like the looks of this place. Oh, quiet. Oh, miss, we have an appointment. Oh, please be seated. Hey, you, you, can't catch me! <laughs> what was that? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> Nothing. You, you, can't catch me! <laughs> hey, there he is again. Hey, miss. What's wrong with that guy? Oh, nothing. He thinks he's an apartment. He's playing hard to get. <laughs> he, he thinks he's an apartment. All he has on is a pair of shorts. Well, he's probably unfurnished. I... <laughs> Look, Abbott. I'll give you my 28 bucks. Just get me out of here. No, this must be legitimate. I just want you to tell the professor that, Abbott, uh, Abbott. you know, that you Abbott, can't... Uh, now, don't interrupt. Abbott. Tell the professor that you can't remember. You Abbott. can't think it. You're going off your... What's Abbott. that? What do you want? Don't look now. But is that a horse standing over there? Well, certainly it's a horse. <laughs> but don't be afraid. Go over and pet him. Okay. Please, sir, don't touch my horse. He has me terribly upset. Something wrong? I'll show you. Dobbin. <laughs> Dobbin, would you care for a lump of sugar? Merci, no. J'ai déjà eu très de well, tell me, would you care for some oats? No, 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 no. Je voudrais une pomme. Uh, you see why I'm worried? That horse has never been to France. <laughs> Abbott. Oh, Abbott. Abbott, I'll give you 30 bucks. Get me out of here. Quiet. Professor Wilkins will see you two gentlemen now. Come on, Costello. Uh, <laughs> Professor Wilkins. Be with you two gentlemen in a moment. Goodbye, Mr. Snodgrass. Feel better now? I feel swell, huh? Felt better in my life. I feel awful. I'll be glad if I live through tonight. <laughs> what are you doing tonight, Mr. Snodgrass? Oh, I'm going to stay home and read. I'm going out to stick up a bank. <laughs> fine, fine. Well, uh, goodbye, Professor. Nice seeing you. Drop dead. <laughs> hey, what's with that guy? Split personality. Now, <laughs> uh, which of you need help? I do I can't find my way out of here. Uh, hold on, Costello. Oh, Professor, this is the young man I told you about. You know, the one with the M-O-N-E-Y. Who's got the mumps? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, I recall. Now, just what was your trouble? Anytime I do something wrong or tell a lie, I hear music. Very unusual case. Kindly answer these routine questions. Name? Costello. Born? Once. <laughs> Height? Five foot two. Width? Five foot two. <laughs> Chest? Five foot two. There's no use wasting your time. I'm the same in all directions. <laughs> Will you shut up, please? Age? 24. Neck? <laughs> Never. <laughs> like an ostrich. Hey, I hear that music again. That's what I was telling you about, Professor. He's hopeless, isn't he? Only a further examination will justify a conclusion. Now, in your family history, is there anything that you could consider abnormal? Oh, no, sir. What do you mean, no, sir? What about that aunt of yours who sits in the street banging the cement with a mallet? Well, that's not her fault. Her husband told her to hit the road. <laughs> please. Please, none of this bickering. Now, Mr. Costello, please lie down here. That's it. Now, relax. Let yourself go. Tell me everything about yourself. Think back through the years. I'm a little bare-faced boy, skipping Merley over Smith and Dale to the little red schoolhouse. I'm hurrying toward it. Faster, faster. I don't want to be late. I've never been so happy in my life. The school is on fire. <laughs> Persecution complex, continue. I see myself now. I am 16 and coming home from high school. I'm coming home from the third grade. <laughs> I had a swell day at the reform school. <laughs> Walking down the road is little poinsettia Fiedelhofer, whose father's with Fiedelhofer, I'm a flock of retina fennel Oh, no, no more of that. 
No. I'm carrying little poinsettias books. Suddenly, out of the woods come four bears. They knock me down. Two sit on my arms and two sit on my legs. And you're terrified? Not at all. They just want to sit around and chew the fat. <laughs> all right, Costello, you said enough for 28 bucks. $28? What are you talking about, Mr. Abbott? Uh, sh- I told you over the phone I'd split his estate with you, didn't I? Estate? Yeah. You mean we went to all this trouble to convince your best friend he's screwy, have a lawyer draw up papers, have me set up an office, all this for a measly $28? Well, you see, I... Uh, mm-hmm. I, uh, Schizophrenia paragoric. Well, what's that mean, Professor? Mr. Abbott, you lie down on the couch. Yes, mm-hmm. you lie down, uh, Abbott. I mean, now, tell us, what's your uh, name? Uh, what's your sex? Wait a what minute. Caucasian are you? Wait a minute. I'm your birth. I'm not what's your whip? And you want $28 right? from me? Abbott, I'll take $15. I'll take anything at all. Abbott, you should have never did this to me. Oh, Adam Costello will be back for Camel Cigarettes in just a moment. During the war, the makers of camels offered a weekly salute to the men in the armed forces. Not just words and music, but also a definite actual gift the men valued and wanted. Cigarettes, free camels by the tens of millions. More than 150 million free camels were sent to fighting men overseas. Now free camels are sent to servicemen's hospitals instead. This week, the camels go to Veterans Hospital, Brecksville, Ohio, U.S. Army Bruns General Hospital, Santa Fe, New Mexico, U.S. Naval Hospital, Portsmouth, New Hampshire, U.S. Marine Hospital, Memphis, Tennessee, and Veterans Hospital, Legion, Texas. Camel broadcasts go out to the United States three times a week, a rebroadcast to practically every area in the world where our men are still stationed, and to our good neighbors in Central and South America. And now, here are Bud Abbott and Lou Costello with a final word. Ah, look, Costello, I wouldn't take your $28. It was all a gag. Always remember, I'm your pal, your best friend. I know, Abbott, and I like you, too. Do you really need money? Well, I could use a fin. Well, uh, will you sign a note? Well, sure. Good. We'll go over to Fetal Hopper, Bing's uh, parents, Swagger, Emma Flocker, No, 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 no forget the money. Good night, folks. Good night. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Be sure to tune in next week for another great Abbott and Costello show brought to you by Camel Cigarettes. And remember, try camels in your tea zone. See if they don't suit your taste, your throat, to a T. C A M E L S. Ask any woman if she doesn't like to see her man smoking a pipe. And ask any man if he doesn't like the rich, hearty, fine flavor of cool-burning, tongue-gentle Prince Albert. It's no wonder more pipes smoke Prince Albert than any other tobacco. Saturday night, tune in to Prince Albert's Grand Ole Opry. The new singing star, Red Foley, will be on hand to sing American folk songs just the way you like to hear them sung. The Duke of Paducah and Minnie Pearl will be there, too. Remember, Saturday night on NBC, Grand Ole Opry. This is Jim Doyle in Hollywood reminding you to listen again next Thursday to another Abbott and Costello show for Camel Cigarettes. Good night. This is NBC, the National Broadcasting Company.